America is so ugly, they don't love us at all. People dying in Ferguson. She will not get involved. I'm speaking the truth. I will not try to dumb it down. Put my hands in shackles, leave my blood on the ground. Christopher Columbus, George Washington, Adolf Hitler, I might not be there to touch you, but the universe will get you. Francis Slay is a coward, and I mean it sincerely. Send your troopers to kill me. Let's go to war if you hear me. There's no love for my people, so there's no love for the system. When they do build a school, they use it to deceive them. Hello, everyone. My name is Ricardo Bravo. And before I get started with this video, I would first like to highlight my intended audience for it. If you're a college-age student who has a strong passion for the music genre of hip-hop and strongly believes in the importance of addressing these social issues and many more, then I hope this video touches you in a positive way. Now, in the short clip you just saw, it features Missouri hip-hop recording artist Tef Poe, who is seen right here, sitting on the left. And in the short little freestyle that he does for us, he basically talks about his frustration with America and how he feels that the country doesn't like him nor the black community, while also noting that they kill people based on the color of their skin. And it's really through this that we can see that hip hop can be used to communicate a very powerful message. With this in mind, I'm going to be talking about rap music and how it's been used to enhance public awareness on prominent social issues, such as police brutality, racism, and racial inequality which can involve many different aspects, right? But for this specific video, um, I'm looking at the idea of redlining. But to start off with how hip hop has been used to address these prominent social issues, I want to first mention legendary Compton rapper, Kendrick Lamar, who was seen right here in this clip. But basically, on March 15th, 2015, Lamar released one of the most important groundbreaking albums of the 21st century known as To Pimp a Butterfly, a project that became universally acclaimed and praised not just for its beautiful musical landscape of jazz, soul, and funk, but also for its subject matter that centered around systemic racism, police brutality, black liberation, depression, fame, and success. And one standout track that I specifically want to mention from the album is the hit single titled All Right which became a national anthem for the Black Lives Matter movement and essentially was one of the driving forces during this Cleveland protest that occurred on July 26, 2015, in which activists are seen chanting the song and refusing to let a police officer drive away with a 14-year-old that was arrested due to the fact that he was allegedly intoxicated. Or so they say. Here's the video. <laughs> Now, as you saw, there's people chanting lyrics to the song and blocking some of the officer's cars that contain the 14-year-old. It's now known, according to this article, that the teenager was violently slammed to the ground by a police officer, which is police brutality. Now, in my opinion, this scenario right here is a really great example of how hip-hop music can be used to create public awareness on this type of issue. You know, through the chanting of this popular song, let the world know just how powerful hip-hop was as a form of communication. This made news headlines, YouTube videos, and other mediums. And it's really through this song that all these people were able to come together to find the courage and motivation they needed to truly combat this very unlawful practice. And I just find this absolutely beautiful. It's phenomenal to me. It's inspiring and it really lets you know just how powerful music can be and how it, you know, can be able to, you know, raise this conversation, you know, conversation, a conversation on these very important social issues. And essentially, the protest managed to pay off. 
According to this article, it is now known that the child was released from the police officer's hands and was taken back to his mother. Another example of hip hop being at the forefront of these social issues comes from Massachusetts rapper Twitter Lucas, who specifically addressed the issue of racial inequality in this song. Now, for this next clip, I'm not going to play the song since it uh, contains profanity and other offensive language that I don't think would be appropriate for uh, this school related video. But here you go. Now, the song is titled I'm Not Racist, and it was released on November 28th, 2017, along with this accompanying music video. And in the video, it shows two different races, both narrated by Joyner. One is this white man right here, and the other is a black man. But to start off, this white man, the red hat, gives a list of grievances against black people. He starts off by saying that black people don't care about their kids, they complain about being poor, and they would rather party and sell drugs, instead of getting a job. And how they live off food stamps and government assistance, while white citizens, like this man himself, has a job and works very hard and pays his taxes. black man then responds and counters by saying that white people don't take initiative for their mistakes and instead blame other races while also highlighting that he himself is unable to find a job because this country judges him based on the color of his skin so he has to resort to selling drugs as a form of income and to be able to put food on the table he also mentions that white people don't know what it's like to be wrongly interrogated, mistreated, and basically seen as a criminal by the police. Now, as these two individuals continue to offer their own, sorry, their own perspectives on each other, throughout the video, they maintain that they're not racist. Now, the way I see it, I think it's absolutely jaw-dropping, just very intelligent to witness the way Joyner narrates both perspectives of the black community and the white community in this music video. It's really through the art form of hip-hop that we're able to get a better understanding on this vast racial gap that exists and still may exist between these two racial groups, both economically and personally. One doesn't know what it's like to be negatively stereotyped by the police and unable to get a job because of it. The other doesn't understand why they don't own up to their mistakes and instead blame other people for them. And since this video covers these topics and it also reached 140 million views on YouTube, we can really get a sense of how strong hip hop's reach is and how it's able to generate a huge amount of awareness on these prominent social issues especially this one of racial inequality and this video to me is one of the most provocative videos of really of around this time and it really brought this discussion of racial inequality back into the limelight for my last and final example i would like to highlight California rapper Childish Gambino, who's seen right here sitting on the left. And he basically released a song that many of you are probably familiar with. It's called This Is America, released on May 6th, 2018. Essentially, the song addresses a string of different social issues, such as gun violence, slavery, and racism. Now, again, I'm not going to show you the audio of the music video because it really contains, uh, like I said, a language that's not appropriate for school. And I feel like it's really more important to focus more on the video itself than the lyrics. I'll show you why in a second. And it's these topics that can be found through the symbolism of this music video. First, there's Gambino's very goofy smirk that he's about to make right here. Um, which is essentially a reference to the racism from the menstrual show era during the 19th century, in which black people were depicted in a dehumanizing, cartoonish way to 
entertain white audiences. There is also the reference to the June 17, 2015 Charleston shooting that was performed by 21-year-old white supremacist Dylan Roof, who killed nine black church members during a Bible study. This can specifically be seen right here, when Gambino pulls out a firearm and violently guns down this church choir that is singing behind them. Now, again, I'm obviously not going to show this part of the video because it's a very graphic and violent scene that I feel is not appropriate for school audiences. But if you want to watch it, the video is on YouTube. Lastly, in the final closing moments of this music video, we have a very terrified Gambino running away from these mysterious strangers that are chasing him in a very dark and black hallway. And this right here is definitely a reference to the idea of slavery, thinking back to America's dark past and how a black slave would try to run for their life away from his slash her owner. And through this picture, we can see a clear depiction of that. Now, in my eyes, this music video served as a great catalyst in raising public awareness on these certain major issues that plague our country such as mass shootings and racism. Which in this nation, it almost seems as if that's normal nowadays, right? And we really get a sense of that normalization through this picture right here, um, which is Gambino dancing with these school children as chaos seems to be um, ensuing in the background, right? You have uh, people rioting, uh, cop cars being burned down. There's a lot of violence here. So it's not just Gambino raising awareness on these issues, right? It's bigger than that. It's like, it's through the essential use of hip-hop and this imagery that Gambino is essentially waking America up, letting the nation know that, hey, these issues still exist, and instead of taking initiative and trying to ameliorate or solve them, we choose to be distracted, like Gambino is in this music video, right? You see all this chaos happening, and he's just dancing, right? It's almost as if he's in embracing or he's like the the depiction of america embracing these issues right so while the world seems to be crumbling down america is just kind of like dancing away and not really considering them which i guess is kind of clear if you think about it since these issues keep on happening right and i think that's absolutely just um beautiful the way he does this i feel like it's really eye-opening right because it's I mean, police brutality and mass shootings, these things tend to happen a lot um, nowadays in our country, right? And once they happen, we can't do anything about them. They just kind of happen. We, we're at a point right now in our lives where we're just finding that as normal. And with hip-hop, I feel like it's not just about the lyrics of the song that matter. It's also really in the music video, you know? I feel like with this video right here, we're able to truly see the power of visual communication and how it can be used effectively to really elaborate more on a message and effectively communicate it as Childish Gambino did right here. Now, while hip hop has been seen as a great music genre that can raise awareness and create a strong sense of social justice within minorities, it has also been criticized by ethnomusicology student at the University of Melbourne, known as Krishan Meep, who believes that this music genre is full of very power-hungry and greedy artists that want to take advantage of the idea of black politics in order to sell more records. And he feels that this may be the case for Kendrick Lamar, who in this article states that by moving away from a politics of resistance on his 2015 album, Pimp a Butterfly, and catering to a mainstream audience on his 2017 album, Damn, Lamar has fallen victim to the process of incorporation by the mainstream culture industry. Lamar has unwittingly transformed cultural resistance into cultural capital. Now, I will acknowledge Krishan's point that Kendrick did manage to reach a wider audience with Damn especially with the idea that Kendrick was able to make digestible music that wasn't as dense and was a lot more easy to understand, as far as the message went. This became the case for popular hit singles like 
humble, love, DNA, loyalty, and finally, element. Now, even if them is a record that doesn't contain any commentary on important social topics such as police brutality, discrimination, racism, and the idea of black liberation and black resistance, I have to refute the idea that Kendrick only addressed these issues in his 2015 album just to sell more records and to essentially sell a message. You see, Kendrick Lamar is an artist, and as an artist, you should always try to be creative. Give your fans something new to hold on to. That's what he was doing with, well, with Damn right here. You know, fans are not going to want to hear you speak on the same topics over and over again. Plus, it's also worthy to know that Lamar, while a very popular and venerated icon in the music industry, he's still a human being at the end of the day, just like us. We shouldn't hold him nor any other famous artist or celebrities accountable for the world's biggest issues and problems. At the end of the day, it's up to us, the people, to unite and fight the oppression that comes from these terrible social issues that still plague our country. And I feel like in order to do that, we should talk to some police departments, right? How can they make sure that no future officers or present ones have a negative history of police brutality or racism for that matter in order for these occurrences to not arise again? And essentially, I have to just also push back the point of, artists taking advantage taking advantage of these issues to make money i feel like that's not true because they know they need to talk about this they talk about these messages essentially give awareness on these issues um to bring social justice because they know it needs to be made they know how many families have been affected by racism police brutality and they know that people need to unite and come together and this is what hip-hop does and essentially music in general it creates a strong sense of liberation and freedom one that makes it a little bit easier especially for people of color to breathe in a country that has had a dark and ugly history of racism discrimination police brutality mass shootings and that's why i maintain that hip-hop has done a really great job in raising public awareness on these social issues while also establishing a strong sense of social justice for many people of color. And with this in mind, I hope that this music genre, along with many others, continues to flourish and prosper for many generations to come. This has been the end of my video. Thanks for watching.